Truth is pure awareness except from wisdom from the sense of eternity. There are three words that you have to remember always along life's roads. First is relaxation, thoughtlessness and finally the silence. And if these three words are no more words to you, instead they have become experiences, your life will indeed be transformed. It will be benediction. The innermost core of man is witnessing awareness or watchfulness. You can call it anything, but that will be another meaning of witnessing. Truth is pure awareness. Just be aware and you will find thoughts starts disappearing. Thoughts cease to exist when there is awareness. Witnessing brings relaxation, the total relaxation. There is no need to fight. Remember, witnessing ultimately flowers into awareness. Your awareness is enough to destroy any stampede of thoughts or emotions. You are standing in the midst of the marketplace, yet still you are alone. You are standing on the periphery, but you are constantly looking at the center. Your connection to the center has not vanished. And when mind is totally empty, the temple is ready to receive the unknown and unknowable. And inside the temple, inside the temple, the only God worth placing is silence, is oneness, and nothing else. These three words are very important to remember. Relaxation, thoughtlessness and finally silence. If these three words are no more words, instead they have become living presence for you. These have become your experience. Your life will indeed be transformed. Your life will be a life of benediction. Only a few people are born with awareness. Those are the people who die in awareness as well. If death was conscious, then birth will be conscious again. Because death is one side of the coin and birth is another side of the same coin. The scientists have discovered that all of a sudden a big star disappears in an unknown and then after some time another star appears, comes into existence. It is like a tunnel. From one side you enter into the tunnel and next side you come out. When you are entering the tunnel, you will find that you are entering into darkness. This is, this entry into tunnel from one end is like death. And when you have traveled through that tunnel for a while, you start seeing the glimpses of light coming from the other end. And then all of a sudden you find that you are once again in the light. This is birth. 
entry into the tunnel is death. But the tunnel remains the same. Its two ends are death and birth. So once you understand this, then death becomes a bliss for you. And Master teaches you how to die moment to moment. Not the final death, which always remains an unconscious effort. You have a particular circumstance and situations to deal with today, but we carry these for a long period of time deep within us. If someone has said something to you, if you had a bad experience, that never dies, continues to remain. And it is because of that you cannot be in the precise moment. You learn from that, but you are in the moment. You have gone to a restaurant. You have been served a dish that has caused upset to you. The memory of that lingers. That does not mean you do not go to the restaurant. Maybe you can try that dish again and if it does, then you can completely cut off from that particular dish and next time when you are visiting you choose another dish. But there is no animosity with that dish because it may have something that upsets you, but it may be a pleasing taste for someone else. Very few people are born with awareness. Those are the people who die in awareness. So when you have been served that dish that has caused upset to you, you can remain antagonistic. You may not want to visit that restaurant again. But the, the other aspect is you are entering with awareness not to try that. There are many other dishes that you can try. If the death was conscious, then birth will be conscious. Because death is one side and birth is the other side of the same coin. And awareness is the greatest alchemy. Just go on becoming more and more aware and you will find your life starts changing for the better in every possible dimension. This will bring great fulfillment and this fulfillment leads to the ultimate. We are in the season of the Hindu festival of lights. On this occasion we light many dias or lamps. It can be an ego trip that I light so many dias and my lamps were lit all night. But if there is awareness, you will remember the message of Buddha. We are trying to bring the lights into the environment and in the life of others. What about bringing light in your own life? Buddha continued his sermons for 40 years. When he was ready to enter into Mahaparinirvan, someone asked, what is your message? Buddha said, my life has been a message. And the life of a master is a life of awareness. Awareness is his message. Be in harmony with all that is and all that is happening. If you ask Jesus what was his message, his message was, let thy will prevail. And the moment you accept, let thy will prevail, there will be relaxation. 
there will be a state of thoughtlessness, there will be silence. The Buddha said, my life has been a message and still you are asking. And he said only one word, up deepo bhava, be a light unto yourself. What shall you gain by lighting a thousand lamps outside? That is an outer manifestation. Is the inner lamp is lit within you? And the moment on this occasion, when the world at large celebrates the festival of light, if your awareness remains that I have to be a light unto myself, when a problem or circumstance or situation arrives that need awakening, do I have to get see my path through my own lamp that I am lit, that is lit now? Or I have to seek the light from another lamp? And this is what happens, we start following, we start being. And you will realize that you start growing into inner self. Your life becomes a light unto itself. Do not have choice anymore. Be in a state of choiceless awareness. And remember awareness is always choiceless. Awareness means whatsoever is, is acceptable as it is. And a choiceless awareness is benediction indeed. Allow your awareness to become choiceless. If you are saying that you are aware and still you want to be, want to have your own choice, then it is not awareness, it is something else. Then you are feeling in harmony with divine will. Then you do not have to make effort, then you have to, do not have to make effort to be aware. You will be simply aware. Now it is just like your heartbeat. Awareness will be your heartbeat. You are simply aware. Now it is just your heartbeat or breathing. Even if you try not to be aware, it will be impossible. The very effort will make you more and more aware. Awareness is not a quality, instead it is a characteristic. Awareness is not a quality, a characteristic. Instead it is your whole being. When you become aware, there is no choice left to be otherwise. You are always aware. To be aware is benediction. People go on using the technique of positive thinking. All the psychologists emphasize on positive thinking. In the process, they forget that positive and negative are two sides of the same coin. You cannot discard one and keep the other. Simply, you can take an example of electric bulb or car battery. It has simultaneously the positive and the negative poles. They are not antagonistic to one another. Instead, they support one another. And when the current flows from one to the other and neutralizes one another, then illumination happens. The two stay together and vanish together as well. This is not a technique that trans transforms you. It simply represses the negative aspect of your personality. 
it is a method of choice it cannot help in awareness indeed it goes against awareness awareness is always choiceless therefore i am absolutely against positive thinking if you are not following a worldly path if you are not following the spiritual path you can say positive thinking is good for a matter of talk you can say but deep down you know positive and negative are not separate from one another they are two sides of the same coin and both are necessary to neutralize one another if there is positive current coming in and the negative terminal is loose the illumination will not be there and when you do not choose one for the other you do not choose the negative and discard the positive or choose the positive and discard the negative because you have been told that you must have positive thinking instead it would be better to say a transcendental thinking you will be surprised that if you do not choose instead remain in a choiceless awareness your life will start expressing something which is beyond both positive and negative in fact it is higher than both so you are not going to be a loser it is not going to be negative also it is not going to be positive instead it is going to be existential it will be transcendental if you want to remain totally free then do not choose that is where the teaching of choiceless awareness comes in why the master insist just to be aware and not to choose because the moment you choose you have lost your freedom you are left with only one part and when you remain choiceless your freedom remains total so there is only one thing be totally free and that is choiceless awareness everything else is limited never choose if you choose you will be in the cosmos do not choose a choiceless awareness is the goal just remain aloof but do not choose the moment you choose you have fallen into the trap of the world or into the trap of the mind because mind is the world and world is the mind whatever you choose you will repent because the other will remain and haunt you always if one needs absolute freedom then choicelessness is the only way that you have to live awareness means you come with an inner light you move fully alert and awake each step is taken in awareness and awareness is light awareness is waking you are walking coming sitting sleeping eating making love or doing anything do everything in total awareness in buddhist monastery buddha emphasized on mindfulness when someone ask what is your way are you a philosopher or a thinker buddha said i am a physician the person ask what do you do he said i eat i walk i talk i sleep the man said this is what we all do buddha responded how many of us are aware of it 
when we are walking when you are returning from your work are you aware that your car is moving towards your house or is steering moves mechanically you are not even aware and your uh, steering moves towards the house that is why for mindfulness or for awareness it is said the moment you start seeing the glimpses of your house you start saying your prayers let this house be filled with thy light and you are going to enter into a light house a light box if you are aware if you speak with awareness and awareness comes from the inner being it flows from the inner being towards others awareness is an inner quality of consciousness it has nothing to do with closed or open eyes walk with awareness eat with awareness breathe with awareness in the absence ego remains the way of life remember ego is nothing else but condensed unawareness and when you become aware by and by that condensed unawareness that we call ego disappears it is as if you have brought a lamp into the dark room and the darkness disappears the moment light comes in awareness is the lamp this is why buddha's message is be a light unto yourself when you listen with total awareness then listening becomes possible even if you have heard a single word or a single sentence that is more than enough to transform your life you don't need the holy scriptures one word alone is enough to bring awareness into you or transform your life but for that there has to be awareness when you listen with total awareness then listening becomes possible the body may sleep the heart may also sleep as well and mind can go to sleep but you remain awake remember you are nothing but awareness everything else is a false identification awareness is your nature the body is your abode mind is your computer and awareness is you it is your very being walk but make walking a meditation walk knowingly make eating a meditation anything that you do in life make it a meditation means that you are doing the thing whatever you are doing whatever comes your way you are doing it meditatively with full of awareness breathe but let your breathing become a constant meditation and that is what zikr is when we start doing the kalma how many breaths then it becomes an exercise in awareness breathe knowingly when the breath goes in watch it the breath goes out watch it again in that situation in that state where would you have time to think where would you have time to entertain thoughts of various kinds the breath goes out watch it again then slowly and slowly you will become aware of breathing and this is what the sheikh in the middle east told leon leeford 
that I taught Gurji of how to breathe. Breathing with awareness, incoming and the outgoing breath. And when breath comes in, slowly and slowly it descends and reaches the solar plexus, the dantian. And when it reaches there, it pauses for a fraction of a second and turns. This movement that was up to now downwards becomes upward. And then it continues its upward movement and then it goes out of the nostrils. This process continues. This is breathing. Then slowly and slowly you will become aware of breathing. And this will bring alchemical change. Eat with, eat with full awareness. Take a bite. Chew it. Go on watching. Let the watcher be there in every moment. Whatsoever you are doing, it is not important what, are, what you are doing. The question remains that of awareness. If you are aware, simple act becomes meditation. If awareness is the way, then meditation is the flowering. Aware, if awareness is the seed, then meditation is the ultimate flowering. And then one day, meditation will lead to ultimate flowering. For awareness, you need not go to the mountains or in the caves or anywhere else. Your life gives you enough opportunities to be aware. Every moment, as you traverse through life's roads, circumstances and situations come that give you tremendous opportunity. Someone insults you. Listen to it in full awareness and you will be surprised. The insult is no more an insult. You may even smile. It does not hurt. It hurts only when you receive it in a state of unawareness. Somebody praises and appreciates you, again listen with awareness. And then nobody can persuade you to do foolish things. Nobody can bribe you. In that state, flattery becomes impossible. You will smile at the whole nonsense of it all. Listen, watch, be aware. And then by and by a different quality of being arises in you. It is neither the body, nor the feeling, nor the thought. A different pillar of flame starts gathering within you and becomes more and more crystallized. As this awareness crystallizes, for the first time you will feel more and more that you are. This is the feeling of beingness. And then moods will become more and more irrelevant. They will come and go, but you will remain undisturbed. The climate will change around you, but you will remain unchanged, unaffected. Whatsoever happens on the periphery, on the outside, will not in any way bring change within. Then within remains absolutely pure and uncorrupted. The person who follows the path of awareness finds love as the consequence of his awareness. Love arises as a byproduct or as a shadow. And the person who follows the path of love finds awareness as a consequence or the byproduct or the shadow of love. Love and awareness are two sides of the same coin. And remember, if your awareness lacks love, then it, it is still impure. It has not yet known totality of purity. It has not yet really awareness. It must be mixed 
with a few traces of unawareness. It is not pure light. And there must be certain traces of darkness inside you is still working, influencing and dominating you. If your love is without awareness, then love is not yet. It must be something lower, something closer to lust than to prayer. With awareness, love becomes prayer. So let it be a criteria if you follow the path of awareness, let love be the criteria. When your awareness suddenly blossoms into love, know perfectly well that awareness has happened and samadhi has been achieved. If you follow the path of love, then let awareness function as the criteria, as a touchstone. And when suddenly from nowhere, at the center of your love, flame of awareness starts, flame of awareness starts arising, know perfectly well that you have come home, rejoice. This is the only way to live your life with awareness.